Hey there YouTube, back with another rig review. This is an ongoing project I've been messing with for a while. Started out as an RC four-wheel drive trail stomper, which we all know is the Trail Finder 1 chassis. And it has been upgraded to a Trail Finder 2 chassis with the Mojave body. But it's still running the T-Rex 60 axles. And uh, put those on the Trail Finder 2 chassis it was a little bit of work. I I did not I have not had either of the kits complete. I've just been buying bits and pieces of both on eBay for a while to make other stuff. That's how I built the uh, green truck back there. It's all just bits and pieces. So that's kind of how this one came to be. I had a TF2 chassis. I had a T-Rex 60s axles laying around. So I was like, well, let's make it work. There's a mosquito in here. Um, let's see where to start. To start, this is the first Mojave body that I ever built. I put this on the, uh, the uh, Yoda chassis, which is the blue truck in the background now. So it does have a hole drilled in the hood, which I've scale bondoed in and rusted over. I'll show more of that here in a second. But it does mount, just like the TF2. Everything chassis-wise is the TF2. The only difference is the axles. I do not have any running gear in this yet because I can't afford to keep buying electronics for all these trucks. <laughs> Just too expensive. I did have a, a brushless setup that I used to have in a drift car in it and it, it did not do well at all. Very too high, very high strung. Didn't do very well. Had no torque whatsoever. So I took that out. I just threw it in there because that was the only spare setup I had laying around. Um, let's see, things I've done to the body, we'll go over the body first. I have cropped off the front fenders here. It does have scale emblems, rubber mirrors, lots of rust, lots of weathering, some dirt. Um, I always use a paint marker, hand paint all the window trim on all my, my Hilux bodies. It's dusty. Uh, this one does have... The complete interior is just a, a standard Tamiya interior, but I did add the CC hand door panels, which are ridiculously priced, around 40 bucks to find here in the States, but they're pretty dang cool. I, I left the armrest black, has a, the metal, actual metal trim you gotta try to glue in. It's tedious, but it, just having door panels in there really, really finishes it off. I, I'm, I'm happy with those. I'm, I'd like to get some for both my other Hilux trucks back there. I still don't have an interior at all for the blue one. <clears throat> uh, let's see what else. Um, go around the front here. We've got painted grill. This kind of factory looking. I cannot remember where I got this bumper. I bought this bumper and the hubs for my, my D110 and my uh, Land Cruiser. I got them all on the same website and I cannot remember for the life of me where the heck I got them. And this bumper actually bolts to the body, not the frame. Some people like that, some people don't. I, I think it looks pretty good. I had the, the bumper I put on the D110 on here. It was way too big for the Hilux body, but it, it fit kind of. I mean, the top of the bumper itself was way down here. You had the bars and it, it, it fit kind of. It worked for a while, but I, I decided to go a different route with it. And this bumper came in bare aluminum. And I, I want to say it was around 30 bucks. I mean, it's, it was CNC'd, solid aluminum bar. It's good and solid, but it does bolt to the, the body, to the front the grill shell piece that attaches in. And it didn't look right with the, the fenders hanging down, so I did have to cut those back. Which helped with the, the turning radius, because... These, uh, what are these, rock stompers or mud, mud slingers. Yeah, they look like the old I rock super swampers, but, uh, did, they did rub a little bit. You always gotta do a little trimming on these things. And I used the rust all kit on this. This, this body I finished real nice and pretty and maroon, did all the trim and, 
I drove it once, scratched it, so I, what I started doing, I, I hit it with a, a mud or dirt colored paint marker, and then I would actually spread some powders on it. And I've got this set of, it's called Vallejo Pigments. And I think I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. Might have been Hobby Town. And it comes with a few natural colors of weathering. Well, I don't remember how much that was, but it goes a long way. So I'd, I'd hit it with some paint marker, dirt colored, and I would go over it with the powders. Then I got a big old paintbrush. I found this works really well for spreading out the powders. You just dump, dip it, spread it around, but it doesn't really stay. I mean, it's, it's, it's a good weathering technique. But for something that you're going to be handling and, and doing stuff with, it really needs to, to stick. So I picked up the uh, rust all kit on recommendation from one of the Facebook groups. It's a four-step process. First step, you've got rust. And everything, all of this is very watered down. So you smear that on. I, I did the entire truck, not really knowing how it worked. And it, it, it came out okay. It's not... This was my first attempt at it. Second step is a black wash, which is very important because it gets in all the little cracks, and the vents on the hood. It just helps add a bit of depth to the to your finish. And the third step, which is the most important, is a uh, flat. It's just a super flat, is what they call it, and that just dulls everything. It makes it look aged. I mean, you can see back there on the hood of the. Uh, I can focus this on that blue truck. It's just that that was a nice semi-gloss finish, and after the, the three steps, it really added a, a dull effect to it, as it did to this one as well. <clears throat> so uh, the the fourth step of that process is dirt. They send you a <laughs> container of finely ground dirt. And that, that I use that in in little places like behind the the wheel arches and in the bed just to simulate dirt, like where it would spray when you're going down a dirt road. You can see some of that as I turn it around. Got a little bit of a, I mean, it still come off, but it it, it sticks once that once you get that that super flat finish on it. You do it while it's wet, sprinkle a little dirt in there, and it stays on pretty well. Most of uh, the rust up here on the mirrors is done with the uh, the Vallejo pigments. These rubber mirrors are awesome. I really need some for that blue truck. I have them on my, my green Hilux over there. and they, I mean, you roll it over, they're in the window. They pop right back out. That one never sit quite right. I mean, they're not perfect. I think they're only like 12 or 13 bucks. A little pricey, but I, I've... It's worth it because there many times I ain't even driven the the blue truck, but once, and I've had to glue them on like six times just from what we're doing on the body work. I I bought the uh, the fancy CC hand side marker lights, and I haven't ever glued the lenses on. I just left the the, the buckets and the mounting thing. I hated that uh, you had to glue that. When the time I did that, I didn't have any non whitening glue which is crucial to doing these bodies, especially the cruiser body. But you have to glue so much stuff down. It's not all screw in, like these are the door handles screw down. The, the mirrors are glue on, emblems are glue on. The lens for the all the side marker lights are glue on. So you really need a non-whitening super glue. What I use for that is this uh, Tamiya cement. I picked up here at local hobby town. It was like three dollars and thirty cents, and it is flammable, of course, but it's not non-whitening. It is non-whitening, so that'll help you with your body projects to not make everything turn white after it dries. I had that issue on the green truck for a while before I ended up with that kind of kind of glue. Uh, it's gonna be real hard for me to show you the interior. Get the body loose here. See if I can get in there a little bit. 
do have a you know, felt, sticky back felt sheets you can get at Walmart. Use that for the carpet. The uh, I didn't want it to be automatic, but I have an automatic shifter. It came from a, I think a sand scorcher or one of the Tamiya kits. I had an interior set from because the uh, driver it comes with has a cowboy hat. So I use that automatic shift lever. Steering wheel is, I believe that's the one that came with the Tamiya kit. Just got the stick on gauges because I can't afford the uh, CC hand dash kit. But the door panels, door panels are super nice. Really, really complete the interior. And this one's, I, I kind of weathered it a little bit. It didn't want to stick to that brown paint. That was a Tamiya brown. I can't remember what color it's exactly called. Same one I used on the uh, interior for the D110. And I painted the vents and the handles black, all the window trim. Side marker lights are painted black. Move around here to the bed. Did a primer tailgate. The uh, Toyota lettering is 3D printed. I bought off of that website that does 3D printing. Shapeways. It, it's way too thick. I, I need to sand it. I sanded it down some after I'd already glued it on and realized that was way too thick. It needs to be sanded down some more. But it, I just hadn't messed with it. I mean, I've painted it so many times now, and I've rusted it. Got uh, the stock. Uh, this is the plastic trail finder bumpers. Let me zoom in here and show you my custom bumper stickers. <laughs> not a not a fan of change that's happened. The, uh, I did put the CC hand pre-finished tail lights lenses. Very nice. I overpriced, but that was before I realized how easy it was to paint lenses. I've got a transparent orange and a transparent red, and I've gotten pretty good with the paint marker doing edges of stuff now, so I don't probably won't buy those again, but at the time, this was the first Mojave body that I had built, and I, was, I just wanted it to look as realistic as possible. Move up here and here to the bed. And you can see I've got this canoe. And this canoe isn't anything fancy or custom. This was from a little set of toys from Walmart. That came with a little cruddy looking action figure and a dog and a fishing reel. And came with some uh, fish and I do have plans to use the fish to uh, mount on a wall here in the shop. I think that would look pretty good on a little plaque. Looks like he's got a trophy. But uh, that canoe, I filled some holes in the bottom with some Tamiya putty. Sanded it all down. It was originally blue. I painted it traditional canoe green. Painted the, the trim silver, the seats black. Just a little bit of work, something I was messing with when I was bored. The big thing here in the bed is the roll bar. Now, I did make this roll bar out of brake line. I did not solder it. I did not weld it. I'm not good at either of those. All I have is a stick welder and that is way too small and thin to stick weld. So that is JB welded together. It's not perfect. It's not great. But it looks pretty good and it only cost me about 10 bucks. Spray painted it black. The, uh, I can't remember what diameter the brake line is, but I bent up the arch for the front, two rails and a crossbar. I did have a tire mounted on it, but that piece kept coming off. It just would not stick. Something about the paint I was using was making the JB weld not stick. It would just fall apart, so I gave up on the spare tire mount. But the uh, it is screwed in through the bottom of the bed. I didn't thread the bottom of the brake line, but it was just the right size, so it threaded itself. <clears throat> this is kind of a camping truck. I've got the canoe, I've got another one of those Rubbermaid containers, Proline grill and propane tank. I've got a spare gas tank, and over here on the far side, I have a uh, ammo can. And that one is mounted with the 
rare earth magnets. I like to use those. That was a little tip I got from uh, GCM Racing in their series of scale videos. I drilled that out with about a quarter inch drill bit. Glued in a couple uh, rare earth magnets, little round ones. Glued some to the bottom of the bed. And now it just sits right over there where it's supposed to. Maybe. And it just locks in. It's loose, but it stays in place. And you can see I've got a good amount of dirt in the bed, a little bit of rust in the corners. Some more scale stickers in the window. If I can show you those. Got my little Statue of Liberty holding the AR-15. My Deer Hunter one in the middle. And my Skywarn Storm Chaser sticker on the back. That was something I used to do. The Certified Storm Chaser. You can tell by some of my other videos of uh, weather pictures and things like that. That back window is good and dirty. I'll go ahead and pop off the uh, body here. The underneath was all painted. Got a bit of overspray. The interior is painted black. That bumper just mounts to the stock holes for the stock bumper. So it is attached to the grill, not the, not the frame. Chassis is pretty much stock TF2. Focus this again. Except for the axles and the shocks. I do have right now, this is the truck that I robbed the uh, electronics mounting plate from to put on the D110. Because this is the one that comes on a D110, it's strictly for the battery only. But none of my electronics would reach to the back. So I used the TF2 one that comes up here. And so I had a place to mount on my electronics. Right now I've got an orange RC servo that works with my Spectrum DX3R, no, 3S, DX3S. Which I ended up with that used from a bunch of stuff I bought a long time ago on eBay. It's been a really good receiver. I, I just changed the batteries for the first time. It's been nearly three years since I've had it. And it, I think it saves up to ten models. I've got like three or four on it right now. It's a, I really like that. That was one of the biggest things I had growing up with RC is the FM or AM and your batteries. If you left the controller on for five minutes, your batteries were dead. But this is the single speed R3 transmission. I, I've never had a two speed. This was just what I got a deal on when I built this. TF2, everything. Transfer case. The uh, fuel cell is one of the mystery box items I got. It's the nicer aluminum one. I wouldn't pay for that to buy it outright. I think it's like 30 bucks. But, you know, whatever floats your boat. Uh, the servo in this is just a, I don't even think it's metal geared, it's just a high tech, high torque servo. It's got a metal arm. It works. It's not, not the greatest. Just like a lot of my stuff, it's not the, not the highest of high end. But it's not, not your basic stuff, it's just a little bit better. And uh, I do have just the standard axial kit shocks with the remote reservoirs on the front. I did not put them on the rear. If you can see in there, let me zoom in a little bit. In the rear, standard TF2 layout with the T-Rex 60 axle. Shocks bolt in the same place. I had, do have a little problem with it locking. I, I can't find the right brackets here for the, the shackles in the rear, so they do kick back and lock. I think with a little bit heavier shock oil, it prevent that. The front, the uh, it's kind of similar to what I do on the on the uh, Bruiser Raptor or Yoda chassis. Brought the shocks all the way down to the bottom of the axle, the bolt. Just freed up some space behind the steering so it's not all jammed into one spot. Makes it a little bit easier to get to. Um, not much else to see. It's all stock TF2 other than that. The uh, 
tires and wheels are 